Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this joint committee meeting of the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee and the Public Safety Committee. Um, this morning we have one item. It is the FY25 operating budget for uh, for our technology and enterprise business solutions on the public Office of Public Safety Programs and Regional in interoperability, the OFPS. Uh, so we will be looking at their budget. So I don't know if folks want to come up from OMB, TEBS, and anyone else who's here who'd like to speak to this. And I will turn over to uh, Dr. Torregas. Am I yes. turning over to you? All right. Yes. I will turn it over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the reason uh, that the joint committee is, is, is coming to session is because TEBS decided to organize a special office within TEBS overall to really focus on public safety programs and also regional interoperability. I, 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 as staff, I welcome that uh, uh, initiative that they took. Uh, uh, Mike Knuppel, who's here on the desk uh, in front of you next to uh, Director Roper, is the director of that office. So it was deemed that it would be useful to have a, review, a joint review and perhaps if you think it goes well, you should continue to do this in years uh, subsequent to that for all public safety technology uh, uh, issues. Um, I, I don't have anything specific as an introduction. Perhaps you'd like to, to hear from uh, uh, Director Roper or Mike, and then we can go um, uh, very quickly through the items that are presented for you. I was just going to say, if if it doesn't go well, we really need to do this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Mike Knuppel with uh, TEBS. Um, I'm, I'm the chief of the Office of uh, Public Safety Programs and inter, inter, uh, Regional Interoperability. Thank you. Um, Director Rowe, do you guys want to add anything else to an overview of the project, where we are with this, or just have a, uh, Dr. Contreras go through it? Dig in. <laughs> All right. We're digging right. in. <clears throat> Um, on page two of my memo, you'll see the uh, organizational diagram for TIBS, and you see clearly designated the Office of Public Safety with Mike Nupple as the director. Uh, there are several uh, enhanced and increases uh, items, as you'll see in page three of the memo. There are two that I want to draw your particular attention to. One is the so-called PSDS command post. It's an important functionality, but it is a new functionality, and I wonder if someone from either TEBS or public safety would like to introduce that topic uh, before we go on. And, and can I just say that PSDS stands for Public Safety Data, Data Systems. Yeah. I, it always concerns me that we use the initials and government all of a sudden decides that's the name and the public has no idea. Half yeah. the time we have no idea. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so we're going to talk about uh, Command Point. Uh, it's a, a solution that the uh, ECC director um, has uh, requested. It allows um, an event of uh, a COVID uh, pandemic again, uh, God forbid, um, it allows the uh, dispatcher to um, install a, a select piece of software on their laptops, and they're able to connect to the phone switch uh, to answer the 911 calls uh, remotely, so they can do this from any location. It's a it's a one-time fee to uh, install this uh, software solution, and it's also a um, expense that we will get reimbursed from the state for. So the way our procurement rules uh, work, we need to have the money, put the money into a PO. Uh, if we get approval, we go purchase that product or install it. The state um, sees invoice. The state pays the invoice, and then we release the funds in the PO. So, so that's what we're here for today. And, and uh, Chief Frank, if you want to add anything. Or... Good morning, Darren Frank, Assistant Chief Montgomery County Police. So the other point uh, uh, to hit on this is this is one of our redundancy systems. So not only does it address being able to do remote work, uh, if if we wanted to. The biggest part is the redundancy. We have several systems that allow that for a catastrophic event we can turn to one of these. This is one of the options and, and you know we just saw an AT&T failure and we saw you know the mayhem just from a carrier going down. Now imagine your 911 going down 
and that's what all these things we put together to try and avoid that scenario. I just want to clarify, so these are um, one-time funds, and is it a complete reimbursement from the state, or is there any, does so complete? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so for this particular solution, um, would that also apply if there's a denial of service attack to be able to route to a different number? It would just depend upon the mechanism of the attack, but again, it's another option that like, when we have these incidents come in that, that our, our folks with TEBS can assess and, and point us in the right direction of, of which system to hit to uh, combat that. Okay. And do you know what the, I mean, I know it's software as a service, but do you know what the anticipated shelf life is of it in terms of when there would need to be a subsequent purchase down the road to maintain? Normally the uh, software is uh, good for three to five years, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, thank you. I would, I would say typically um, we, we push it longer than that. <laughs> Which, which we sh which we shouldn't, and I think that'll be a part of our making certain that we're coming back and giving you updates on what we're doing and when we'll need to uh, refresh and modernize these systems. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I too applaud you all doing this, and I and I thank the director and and the police and everybody else. And and this whole idea of redundancy, you know, as much as you have, you probably need even more. I mean, in that time of problems and, and thank goodness air problems have been fairly minimal in, in Montgomery County but during that time of problems you need to make certain that that we can do what we need to do and and as you, you know we've had we've had some issues over the years where we've had 911 uh, failures I guess would be the right term and we certainly have corrected that and we need to continue to do that so I thank you and I applaud you to make a comment about the, um, the chief mentioned the AT&T outage mm -hmm. and initially um, what we read uh, in the media was that it had nothing to do with cyber and later we found out that it actually did so it's all those things that we can control and then also those things that we have no control over so what the chief said was right on point in terms of our being able to move into a re redundant situation um, when we don't know what's going on many times we don't know uh, what's happening until two or three days later, or if at all. So this is just a good way for us to have these systems in place um, when we need them. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is when I wrote the packet, I was not aware that it's a reimbursable mm -hmm. cost. So as it goes into the add and enhance uh, list, I wonder if you can kind of make sure that it's understood that this is a reimbursable cost as a consequence, probably should receive the very highest of priorities under the council president's uh, directive. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> I'm, we're seeing let, heads nod. Let that, me that's turn the, to my left. That, that, <laughs> that, that is the appropriate place for it. I uh, appreciate that, and that's why I wanted to double check because um, yeah, as we're looking at our add and enhance list, um, we want to make sure we're noting those things. Great. There's okay. one other item. Yes. If I can, on uh, page three still, the Radio Tower Uninterruptible Power Supply, UPS, not a delivery company, um, yes. <laughs> upgrades. And this is, a, this is an item that uh, is part of the uh, submission. It is not going to the ad enhanced because it's an existing capability. It's not changing the service. It's to make sure the service is available. And for those that uh, want to dig just a little bit deeper, uh, the Uninterruptible Power Supply does have batteries those batteries have to be replaced on a certain time period and this establishes the replacement cycle so I fully uh, recommend this uh, item all the other items are routine maintenance of effort items so with that I'm finished with my presentation to you Great. any questions um, so I have I, I think this is moving for the joint committees would move this forward to um, the the council and put it on the appropriate places on our budget forms I have a request for when we're done with budget um, because we've had a number of meetings with TEBS and public safety. Um, if we could do outside of budget, just look at all these different systems we have. Um, I think um, Council Member Lukey brought up a great point, which is what's the shelf life of this software? When do we need to renew this? And I'm sure you all have this information. 
um, laid out in terms of you know, here's the different software we're using or equipment. Um, I think it would be just good to, uh, for us to step back not during budget and take a macro look at all these different systems um, at, at one time and, and understand how they're interacting with each other, how they come together, um, because we, we do this um, in individual sessions <laughs> as they come up, some in C CIP, some in operating. Um, and all of you are doing excellent work, and I think it would help us plan um, and, and have uh, better discussions in future uh, budget conversations if we had kind of the, a more global understanding like I'm sure you all do. Chairperson yeah, Stewart, I, I think what um, we're working towards that. I, I, do, I do believe that the last uh, several years, as you know, I've been with uh, Montgomery County now four years, so we walked in with nothing. So the, um, the business continuity um, document that I had a staff to attach and send to you all is, you'll see, it is the effort of cataloging and finding out um, where equipment sits. I mean, even even on-prem servers uh, that we have the opportunity to move to the cloud for redundancy and backup are in people were in people's offices. Mm -hmm. So 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 basically, under, understand that. Um, your your ask is timely. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if you had asked me that two years ago, I would have go, oh no. <laughs> but your, your ask is is timely, and I think we'll be able to do that and satisfy at least what we know. And I, I think we're at a point now where we've got a pretty good idea of where things are. And of course, you know, with the move to the Equinix Data Center, some of you um, were a part. That was our way of moving some of those um, vital systems to a place where we felt like um, we could provide the kind of backup and redundancy that we need. Great. Sure. Yeah. And also, if, if I can add, um, uh, you're always more than welcome. Uh, will you do tours yep. of the uh, the radio sites? I know uh, Council Member Katz had come out uh, several years ago, and we're always uh, it's very close by one of the sites. And uh, if you or your staff want to, you know, stop by, we could set up a time for you to stop by and and sometimes actually seeing the site and how things are set up, it really kind of clicks when we start asking for you know maintenance dollars for this yeah. piece. And we could also do the same thing for the ECC. We can show you where the CAD servers are, yeah. where the dispatch doors, <laughs> and so forth. So we'd be happy to do that if you'd like to do that. Again, when, after the budget season. After the budget, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I know staff usually organizes um, different um, field trips <laughs> for us um, during recess times or after budget. So. Uh, we can probably request that that get added. Yeah, Council Member Lipke. I was going to say, I, I, I appreciate the work you've done over the past four years, and, and being at the state, I could tell you there was one entity, the pandemic hit, and they said, we need a coop. I said, well, like, so after the pandemic hits is not when you develop your continuity yeah. of operations plan, right? And and you got to already have it, just like you don't do your active assailant plan after the threat is in the building, right? This is the wrong time. Um, so. You know, I I would very much appreciate and thank you, Chair Stewart, for for raising this, doing that kind of a gaps analysis of and and multi-year projections of the various systems that are needed to work together and to provide that it, it necessary redundancy. And I want to emphasize necessary redundancy um, so that we have a better understanding. That helps us from a budgetary perspective too as well as just making sure that there's high functionality of all our public safety agencies and that we're doing right by cybersecurity, which I know is in the GO Committee's mm -hmm. bucket, but, but a, an interest near and dear to me as well. Mm -hmm. I always t uh, tell myself when I need to pat myself on the back, I started in January, yeah. and uh, you, as you know, we were sent home uh, in March yeah. uh, for COVID, so much of that work was done um, at home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, with that, I think this session of the um, Government Operations Fiscal Policy and Public Safety Committees uh, is done. Uh, we will move this forward to the full council. Uh, we will take a, uh, for the GO Committee, we will take a 10-minute break and begin right at 10 a.m. So thank you all for coming.